Hi guys, I'm going to do a coloring in this book, Summer Nights by Hannah Carlson. And I'm going to be doing this page here. And what I'm going to start off with is the background. And I'm going to paint it with the um, black matte paint. And I'm trying to find the matte one. <laughs> Always seems to be that way. Okay, so all I'm going to do is paint on the outside, and it's kind of a tedious process here, so I'm just going to go around it like this, and if I don't you know, go over the lines, it's okay. It's not like the coloring police are going to come get me, <laughs> but I know that you probably... Um, because I'm very slow at this. Don't want to sit here and watch me do that part. So what I will do is I will come back when I'm done with this portion of it. And the reason I'm using the matte paint is if I want to color anything out here, the matte paint will allow me to do that with pencils. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and finish the background up and I'm going to go all the way to the edges. And then I will come back and we will do some coloring on it. Okay, we have finished the um, painting on the background. So we're all black. Went around and it's all uh, dry now. So I'm going to go ahead and do kind of the inside here. And I want to do it kind of in a uh, blue color and then maybe a brighter color coming up this way. So I'm going to go in with these two, which is indigo. Um, I'm going to use, I have a lot of sets, but my uh, Prismacolor Premier Indigo is really short. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and use this one. It's just the Prismacolor and it's uh, 901. And this one is the uh, Peacock Blue, which is a 1027. And I'm going to go in with the indigo first and go around the edges. And just kind of put it down in a light layer. So I'm going to go probably down to this leaf here and over to this area, maybe coming down. So kind of a half circle. I'm kind of wanting it to look like uh, just kind of like an evening sky up here. And then maybe a glow coming down from the bottom up. So bring that out a little bit. And wherever I can find the little areas that the blue goes into. I will darken these a bit after I get the two colors blended in together. That's weird. And we'll do a little over here. Okay, then we'll bring in the peacock blue. 
can go over the whole thing and bring that out. using very light pressure. And bring it all the way to the butterfly. Okay, then we'll go back in with the um, indigo and we're going to darken it up in here. Just putting a little more pressure on it. Not too much because we still want to be able to layer these two colors together. So I'll just be working these two colors in here. So I'm gonna probably fast forward it here, get you down a little closer and you can see a little bit better here what I'm doing. Back with the uh, peacock. Okay, we're back with the uh, peacock blue and we're going in just to darken that up a bit. And then again, we're bringing them out and going lighter as we go out. Kind of in the darker areas, we're going to make it a little darker. Shadow spots around the flowers and the leaves.
And then over here too. And then again, we're just blending them out that way. My idea here is to actually put in um, stars on the outside and on the inside here later on in the background. Either with um, white splattered paint or stickles or something. Okay, now we're going to get a uh, white. It's just the Prisma color white. It's a PC938. Uh, and we're just going to go kind of from the butterfly into the blue. It'll buffer it out, but it also, um, the very light coat of blue will stand out more. And we're just going to blend all that together. So kind of pressing a little hard with the white, just so it'll blend it all together like that. Okay, then we're going to get a light blue, kind of like a sky blue, if I can find it. Okay, how about cloud blue? And it's uh, number 1023, and I'm going to work that one in here too.
kind of a purpley color. Yeah, it'll work. blue and around the edges just to darken that up again. Kind of bring it right out into the other colors wherever I want some more texture around the edges. sound is the paper clip over here holding the page to the books so I don't have to hold it down so much. Okay, I'm going to blend that in a little bit better. I have a blending tool I'm not crazy about, but on this. I'm just going to blend this in. how blotchy it is, but I don't usually do too much on the backgrounds of these. And I can always come in with a little inking. Okay. In fact, I think I will. So Okay, I'm going to take a little of the um, tumbled glass here in Distress Ink on this kind of sponge, and I'm going to just load it up on the edge, which is 
doing it like this. I'm rubbing it, but I'm holding up this edge, just holding it down on one side and rubbing it. I'm going to take it over to this piece of paper here. I'm going to see how it comes down. Those little edges I don't want, so I wait until there's not a whole lot of ink on there. Then I would take it to the darkest area first and rub it into the paper. And it gives that soft look down there. Around the butterfly, up towards the flower. Not reloading the ink, I'm just going to bring it over and fade it down. And it just gives a softer look there. I'll we'll probably have to keep working on it up here because I do have a line that I'm not crazy about but I'm going to um, bring up some color up here and complementary to the blue I can either do a green which will mix with the leaves so that's a no-no okay I'm going to take my um, little eraser here and I'm just going to try to very lightly go over some of that blue and just lighten up that edge a bit. So I wasn't crazy about it. I moved a little too dark and instead of going darker I'm just going to get rid of a little bit of that and then go in with True blue. I'm just going to bring that in and we'll see what I can do. If nothing else, I'll put sparkles in there. And sometimes burnishing it with your finger will blend all the wax in too. Just do it that way. And like I said, I'm going to be splattering that maybe with some, like I said, either the white paint or not. We'll find out. It'll turn out in the end. <laughs> Just keep working at it and it will turn out. Uh, this is just the uh, powder blue I'm using here. Let's see what it'll do here. And we did get rid of some of that lining that was going on. So that makes me feel a little better.
I'm just going to bring that in there. Go down to the butterfly and bring it up. And I'm push, pushing pretty hard here. Just because I want to blend that in better. Okay, I'm just taking the same blue thing inking I had on here and I'm just running it kind of all over and down into this area so the ink that it has left on it I'm just dragging down into here and by doing this any of the ink that stays on the paper or fills in any of the areas up here, I can manipulate with water. So I'm thinking down here, I'm going to bring in a little purple. The flowers I was going to do in pinks and browns. Leaves are going to be green. Butterfly is going to be multicolored. So I think a little purple would be a good idea. And all I have to do is find a purple pencil. What do I have here? This Dahlia Purple. It is a 1009 and it is a nice dark purple. And I forgot a little black piece there. I'm going to have to fill that in. So we're just going to take this, make it dark as I can at the wood and just bring it up into the other color and I'll bring it over here too and just kind of blend it in Here, I'll blend the two colors. And with that, I have a Distress Ink that matches, if I can find it. 
Okay, so the purple I have is called Dusty Concord, which is kind of a grape color. And I'm just going to use the mini uh, detail brush or mini detail blending tool that I got off of eBay. On the side here, I am just putting it down to make sure I'm not getting these little dots. So I'll be putting it in and bringing it up. It'll slide a little better on the wax. So I'm just going to go down here into the corner and just kind of very lightly bring that color up. I'm doing it lightly and I'm not going back in to grab any more ink. Just letting the brush or the tool that has the ink on it work for me. Mix it in here with the blue. It'll turn into a different color. Blue and purple mix. And so the reason I brought the Distress ink downward was so I can mix the two colors together. So we're just going to go around, bring the purple up here. And then blend it into the blue on both sides. And there's barely any ink on this if I show you that. Okay, so I don't put a whole lot when I'm blending. And then the more pressure I put on, the more you get out. Okay, just letting you know that. <laughs> and I always work in the darkest section and then very lightly pull it up. And I'm thinking that looks all right. I'm going to add a little bit of pink in there also, just to brighten it up a little bit. Because the purple pencil I put down is a little lighter than the purple ink. Um, which I can do two ways. I can either put the pink in here, or I can darken that pencil. But do you see how that brightened that up a little? This is the... Um, picked raspberry in the little cube and I'll just be adding it in here and bringing that up in here too. Don't want to put too much of the pink in because the flowers are going to be pink but I want to put enough in to brighten this up. Okay, now I'm going to be letting that dry, even if you do see some smudges in there, it will dry a little bit better than that, and I'm going to find a dark um, purple, uh, one that just says purple, <laughs> would be nice, yeah, black grape, what does black grape look like, black? <laughs> we use that one. Um, dropping things. Isn't that always how it goes? So I'm going to um, start with Violet 9 
three two, and we're just going to darken this down here and around the edges because it's a better mix to the purple grape or the Concord grape. And is it called a dusty Concord? <laughs> The grape color and this is just a little more instead of the pinkish color that I used before and that's nice about colored pencils is you can always go over them and change the color along with the inks that's why I love using those too but that'll just bring in a bit more purple there Just ever so lightly go over that a few times and bring it up into the ink that I laid down. Especially on the um, blue sides over here. And I'll bring some blue in down there too. A little bit of the blue. I can spend hours doing this. And just bring it in. Don't need to do too much on this side because I left a white in there. So basically that is our background. I am going to splatter it with water and get some of that um, coloring off. Also I have an electric eraser that I can actually pull some of those up too white uh, splatter on the background in the black to match on the inside but we have to color the butterfly and the flowers and all that first so we will go ahead and show you how we do those okay i've decided to work on the brown areas so i'm going to be doing the wood frame around and then i'm going to make they look like rose hips and these could be primroses, but I'm going to make them kind of in a brownish tone to go with everything else. So the um, brown colors I'll be using are going to be Sienna Brown 945, a chocolate 1082, a burnt ochre 943, light umber 941, beige putty for the lightest tones on it and it's 1083 and then to add a little bit of the green into it i'm going to be using moss green 1097 i know i read you guys the numbers all the time but i also put them in the description box below and we are going to get started here so with the wood trim we'll get a nice big piece here I'm going to go in with a bright color first and just um, go in and out on some of these wood um, swirly pieces. Really no rhyme or reason for it. I just want a couple of tones in here and we'll go with the lightest tones we have and then go into the darkest. And on this side, 
And I'm really not paying attention to the lines. I'm just getting the color into the area. So that is the lightest color. Then um, the lightest color was the burnt ochre. Going in with the sienna brown, just to add different color in there, here and there on all the areas. Keep forgetting about that, I'm going to do that right now. Since I'm not going to get out my um, <laughs> paint, but it does need to be black, I'm just using a Faber-Castell pit pen. Which is going to be a little shinier than the uh, matte paint, but if I go over it with a prism pen, you'll never notice. We'll blend in with the rest of the picture. Okay, now I'm going to go <clears throat> in with chocolate. Kind of adding it the same way, kind of here and there. It's a darker color. And then we will go in with a dark umber. I didn't name that one, but I think I need a darker color, so that's 947. Then we're going to add that in. And then go in with a um, little golden rod. And that will, sorry, I got all these pencils all over the place. <laughs> Add a little brightness to it and kind of like wherever I didn't add color before. So just kind of filling in the blanks. And if we still need some extra texture, we can go in with a little tiny bit of canary yellow. And that'll brighten up anything that needs a little extra brightness in it. Like that. So basically, that'll be our wood. I will add probably some darkness with some black in there later. So I'm going to go ahead and work on these little guys. This is the uh, putty beige and I'm kind of going to add that in the light area. It's kind of where I want to keep it light. I'll be doing all these pieces the same on the top so I'll just show you how I do the bottom ones and just 
be the same in the ones on the top. Okay, this is the uh, goldenrod. I'm going to throw a little of that in next to the beige. Maybe on this side too. Then we will add in burnt ochre. And I'm getting that over in the shadow area, going up the sides. I'm going to go up the uh, little stem pieces. Then we're going to go in with a uh, light ochre. Sorry, the pens are making noise. Add this at the bottom, the one that is behind everybody. Just going to pretend that one's behind everybody. <laughs> Second, it coming up the sides. And then we'll get a darker brown, to dark umber. Basically, we're just doing the same thing and bringing it up. Dark in that area. Very lightly bring that color in. And then we can use a little of the chocolate. Kind of blend everybody. Okay, now we're going to add a little moss green in here.
I'm going to go back in with the dark umber and just add a little bit more of the dark brown in there. And then again, if you want to brighten it up a little, and a little bit of the canary yellow, just give it a highlight. And I'm going to add a little pink in there too. Okay, I got a little muddy here, so I'm just going to take the eraser and electric and the little thingy here it zooms around and I'm just going to put a little highlight in there. Like that. Wherever I need it, wherever I want it. And I like that for that. <laughs> okay, so basically that's what those are going to look like. I'm um, going to put a little pink in there, but I, it's going to be the same color as the flowers, and I will uh, put that in when I do the flowers. The leaves need to be done, and I haven't quite figured out what colors I'm going to do them in. If I'm going to do them in a fall color or if I should brighten them up. So I might as well do the flowers next, and we're going to do those in <clears throat> some interesting tones. So hold on a minute. Okay, we're going to see how this turns out. Um, blush Pink 928, Clay Rose uh, 1017, and Mahogany Red 102. Nine, and I'm going to go over the most of the flower itself in the blush pink and then um, add in the other colors. So we're going to start at this one here, and I'm just going to put the color down real lightly. Darker here in the curve. Of course, where the color is going to go down there. So, like I said, this is a light coating. Some of these have been touched with the ink, and that is fine by me. Adds a little extra shading. So I was inspired on these color choices um, by Carla, um, I'm going to butcher her last name because I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, she is the illustrator of all the um, books that they're doing the Carloween with. Last name starts with an M, I could spell it, but I can't pronounce it. <laughs> and um, she did a uh, picture uh, today, I think it was, 
same time I'm filming this, of a vulture out of her book. Uh, I'll leave a link to the book down below. In fact, I'll leave a link to her video. She's a hoot to watch on, <laughs> on our channel. I love the way she colors her coloring books. I've ordered her Spooky Sweets book, and hopefully that'll come in time for me to actually get one of the pictures done for the Carloween tag. Uh, this is now the clay rose, and I'm going to go in and darken the darkest areas here with. Add a little more shadow in it. Anyway, so she did the uh, vulture's face in these colors, and then I thought, oh, I like that color choice. So, thank you, Carla. It reminded me of a, I know it's kind of obvious to say, okay, she was coloring a vulture's face and I saw it as a dusty rosy color for a flower, <laughs> but that's the way it goes. You can get your inspiration from anything. And we'll add some of this into these little guys too. Okay, and now the mahogany is going to come in and do the darkest shading and a couple of these dots just going to Press hard in a circular motion and add some extra. And then down and under all this. And anywhere there's a deeper shadow. I'll probably add in some gel pen in these flowers also. We'll throw some of this color in here too. And here I'm just going to bring some of that darker color out into the pattern. I think that's a pretty cool flower. <laughs> anyway.
Then we'll go back in with the um, blush pink. Kind of blend that in a little better down at the bottom. And I'm going to add a little white in there. Just keeping these little spots a little brighter. There we go. The uh, center of this is going to be even a darker color, so I'm going to um, do, 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 find a um, like a black cherry or something. One I have out here. Let me tell you, purple is just not the right color. Okay, so I'm going to use black raspberry and do the center in here and the little stamen pieces. Just kind of bringing them out. I'll color some of them and leave some of them in the pink hue. Darken that area there. And then I'm going to use the blush pink in the center. Bring it out. Then I'm going to use a little bit of black and just go around the area a little bit to darken that and I'm going to go around the edges on one side of the flower just to bring them out a bit. darken any of the lines with the white I've got on. And that is how I'm going to do all the flowers. Tiny bit of yellow in there. Just a tiny bit. So, 
all the flowers are going to be done like this. All these are going to be done like this with the eraser to make the highlights. And then the leaves are going to be done with a little bit of the uh, yellow on one side. And then I'm going to go in with the moss green. And then a little bit of the golden rod. On the edges. And then a tiny bit of the dark umber just in the center. Then at the base of the flower here. And then blend it in with a tiny bit of um, the kelp green. And that is what the flowers are going to look like. I might put a little bit of, um, this is Spanish orange on the tips of these ones. To brighten them up a little bit. A little bit of that color in here too, why not? <laughs> anyway, so the leaves will be done like this. And then when we come back in the next video, I will be doing the butterfly. Okay, see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care.